Hello, everybody. I am back after a long period of time. Um, yeah, this is just going to be, I'm in the same room as before. I'm just going to be following up on some of my previous videos, uh, specifically the ones where I talked about my system and Jack's system and overdetermination and parsimony and all of those concepts. I've been thinking a lot more about them, and so I have some more insights to share today. And I was, I tried several times to make uh, this video not tonight, it's not like a writer's block situation, but every time that I would try doing it, I would realize, wait, there's something I've missed here, and then I would have to stop the video and start working on the chalkboard. And I feel like this has taken way more time than it needed to, but I'm also working on my thesis and doing other things, so pardon me. Okay, we're just going to jump right in, um, trying to think of the best place to start. So I realized, so in the previous video, just as a quick recap, uh, to, to oversimplify it a bit, you have my approach, which I laid out in Motes and Beams, and then you have Jack Aaron of World Socionic Society. His, um, uh, it's, it's very much related to the approach, but he had, I don't even want to say critiques, but additions to be made that I later found potentially caused problems. Um, but you can watch that video. That's a good intro to make sense of what I'm talking about here because I feel I have found a way to reconcile the two approaches in a way that at least makes me feel good. Um, so that's what I'm going to be pr presenting to you today. Um, so the first thing, the first realization that I made is what I knew that clearly me and Jack must be approaching these problems in a different way, but I couldn't conceptualize what precisely the difference was. And then I realized that it can be represented in this way. So in my unconscious way of approaching the construction of a typological system of the 16 types is to start, I'll stand right here. I gotta erase this stuff later. It's to start with an undivided whole. And for the purposes of this video, I will call it primus animus, first mind. It's a it's not an important term. I just made it up as a play off of the notion of prima materia from Aristotle's work, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, but I realize what I'm doing is I start with this notion of an undivided whole. Um, I don't talk about that in Motes and Beams. I didn't have it consciously in mind, but it's my way of making sense of what the next step is, which is I then divide that whole, pardon me, into perception and judgment the two original functions, and I take that from Young, and Young sort of makes a similar move. But, um, and then I, I, just as a side note, I relate perception to this sort of generalized notion of extroversion and judgment to a generalized version of introversion. And you see at every stage of the system in Motes and Beams as I construct it, what I'm constantly doing is I'm taking this whole, I divide it in half, I have one side which is more related to extroversion and the other side more related to introversion. And I just keep doing that. It's kind of like the, the creation in Genesis. He, uh, God takes the, the void, and then the first division is between, um, I believe, the land and the sea, and then later the light and the darkness, and he, keep, he makes a series of divisions like that in order to create the world. And so it's a similar idea here. Um, and uh, one of the interesting concepts, so I'll, I'll go ahead and draw the... Uh, because um, you have perception and judgment, and then the next step that you make is, so we know that this side is perception and this side is judgment. The question is, uh, what is the new division going to be? And so I just came up with one, excuse me, which is denotation and connotation. And so as a result of that, you have sensation here, intuition there, thinking here, and feeling there. Cool. We're going to come back to this because this is going to be a critical step, but for now I'm not going to explain it. I'm just going to say in most of memes I just said I came up with a new dichotomy in order to explain the difference um, between uh, uh, what, how, these are, how these are to be arranged and explained in relation to each other. Um, and you know what, we'll go ahead, yeah, we'll go ahead and transition briefly to Jack's system because what Jack does, I realized, so I'm, I'm building it up this way. I'm starting with this hole and then I'm dividing it. And one of the, this is what I was going to say, one of the results of that is that 
because each binary is, is um, isomorphic with all of the others, which is a fancy way of saying that we could say assign a plus over here and a minus over there, and then just make everything a combination of pluses and minuses just all the way down. It becomes like binary code. So for example, sensation thinking, intuition, and feeling, we could represent that as just a Cartesian plane. And if we've agreed that extroverted components are plus and introverted components are minus, and then we assign plus to perception, minus to judgment, and we decide, somewhat arbitrarily, uh, that denotation will be more related to perception and more related to extroversion. I say arbitrary, but I obviously give all kinds of reasons in the book for this. So we'll just say that is more related to extroversion and connotation is more related to introversion. Great. Now we can map these onto a Cartesian grid where we have plus plus, minus minus, and then minus plus, plus minus, right? And so this would coordinate to sensation is up here and boom, boom, yes, uh, feeling would be down here. And then intuition would be, yes, right there. And then thinking would be over there. So you see how, how that works. And the, the reason I bring this up, the important thing is that sensation and feeling have nothing in common with each other and effectively become the poles of the system. And thinking and intuition are the hybrids. Uh, if you'll remember from the last video, um, uh, I can't remember the name of it, I'll put the title in the description so you can watch it. But if you'll remember from that, one of the things that spawned all of this is that this problem reoccurs later in the system where you have the um, theocratic types and the anarchic types also being hybrids between the uh, monarchic and the democratic types. Um, and so in some sense, you, it, it's the same thing here. And the problem with that is, as I explained then, the problem that Jack sees with that and that I also saw is it seems to imply that some types have more, have access to more, um, more, more perspective of reality. Namely, the hybrid types, they get plus and minus. They get plus and minus, right? So they, they, get to, they get the best of both worlds to a certain extent. And they cancel each other out in a certain way, but there's still this element of inequality there. Um, but that's a natural artifact of the system when you build it up in this way. Now, Jack's approach, let me grab the, this. Jack's approach avoids this, and I was having trouble figuring out what precisely he was doing that avoided it. But uh, what Jack's system does is he doesn't build it up in this way. He starts with the functions, right? He starts with four. He says, let's just say there are four functions. And all we're doing, and this is a fair thing to do, because although I build it up in this binary way, I don't go about calling sensation uh, perceiving denotation. Even though I define it as that, I do a synthesis where I say it is perceiving denotation which creates this new entity sensation. So Jack, which I, I suspect is a very NI thing to do, I, uh, N-I-T-I thing to do, and then Jack, if I'm analyzing this right, the N-E-T-I thinker comes in and says, well, you have these new unities you've created, I am now going to examine the objective potential relations between them. And it turns out that each point can have three relations with all of the other points. If you have four points given, they can each relate to each other in three ways. Technically four because you can have a, a self-relation like that. So, but, um, so sensation is related to thinking, and then thinking is related to intuition, intuition to feeling, and then the line across there, and so you get three lines from each one. And then you can label each of these uh, dichotomies or manner of relation between, between the functions. And that is where he came up with, um, let's see here, so you have denotative here, connotative there, sensation and feeling. Um, sensation and intuition is 
perceiving, judging, and then you have this and this, these two relations. Jack says, you left these out, let's give it a name. Let's say that sensation and feeling are involved, I'll represent it with a V here for just to make it clearer, and detached, which I'll represent with an H. These two are detached. Great. Um, that throws a monkey wrench up here because it means, wait, but now there are multiple ways for me to construct the same system. This is the problem I was having, and that's why I referred to this as overdetermined. Because in my mind, it was like, I, I just want the Cartesian plane where I have two axes and I can find any point by simply using those two axes. But you've thrown in this whole new axis. So now I can find everything using two out of three axes. And, but, but from Jack's perspective, it's not overdetermined at all because you, he is taking each of these not as um, e expressions of two dimensions, but as four separate points that are relate, can be related in so many ways. Okay, long-winded explanation there. Uh, but what we're going to do now to see how, how we can reconcile these two things together is we're just going to continue along with my train of thought, building out my system, and then we're going to see where it runs into a problem. And we're going to see how Jack, uh, Jack's idea can be brought in to solve it in, I think, a pretty elegant way. We'll see if, if, if it holds up, but um, that's the idea here. So. Uh, so we have this stage. So we have four functions. To continue on our journey, we need eight functions. Or rather, we can just, we don't even need to know that we need eight functions. We can just say, what happens if we divide this another time? Let's introduce yet another dichotomy. So note, or dimension might be a better word for it. Note that here we have one dimension between perceiving and judging. And here we have two dimensions between the, the four functions. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add in a new dimension. And this dimension is going to introduce extroversion and introversion. So we're going to get a three-dimensional figure. Let's see where the best place would be to do that. We'll just do it down here. That's fine. Um, now, I'm going to draw the three-dimensional figure first, but then I'm going to show a, 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 an abstract way. I can't remember the exact term for it. Um, there's a mathematical term for when you represent a three-dimensional figure in two dimensions. But um, anyway, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. But I'm going to draw it first just because I think it's helpful to kind of see what I'm talking about. And then we draw kind of an X down here. And a line going through it. So you can kind of, you know, you get the idea, and then we'll say that this axis here, coming out here, we'll call that the extroverted, and then back here is the introverted. Great. Uh, and then you see that we end up with eight slices of, of this orange, as it were. Uh, the, the orange of typology. Orange. Anyway, um, and what it is, is you've, you've taken these four and then you've kind of gone out into three-dimensional space and then cut it in half and the part that is protruding out this way, well, we'll say it's the extroverted part and the part that is protruding back into the chalkboard is the introverted part. That's a way to visualize it. And what you get is this figure, which we can represent as a sort of locket figure. So, oh, actually, let's do it this way. So what we're doing here, right, is, so you see, it's like, you know, imagine there's like a little hinge here, and we have opened it up. We've opened it up like a locket, or like a, a, an apple that we've cut down the middle, or an orange that we've cut down the middle, and we've opened it up and uh, what we find inside is we have, in fact, let's go ahead and draw that there and that there so you can kind of see where they, how they're divided. Um, we'll do that too. Sorry, sorry if this is making it more 
complicated to see. The point is, the point is, is you have eight sections. That's actually just going to make it more confusing. Um, and we can call those sections. Uh, let's, we're going to continue off of this stage. So we'll assume that this side is the introverted side and this side is the extroverted side. So we will make this side ti, fi, ni, and si, right? And then this side is not a perfect copy, but what it ends up being is te here, right? Because we've opened it up. So the ti and the te when, we're, when it's shut up, they're only divided, they're like right next to each other, but they're divided by that one axis. So I took T, and then I, shoop, I opened it up like this. I'll do it like this. I took T, and then shoop, I opened up like this. One side is TE, the other side is TI. Um, so that's why it's kind of reversed like this. And we'll see that that is important. Uh, did I? Yes, yes, I'm doing this right. Sorry if that's... A little hard to, it's close enough, you get the idea. I'll redraw it in a minute. You see how that works. It took me long enough to explain it, but you get the idea. So, great, so we have eight functions. Um, that's very nice. How do we get the 16 types? Well, my original idea was this. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and, yeah, we'll go ahead and erase some of this, because otherwise it's gonna, I'll leave that stuff up there. But, yeah, I've still got, well, I don't want to be out of the frame. We'll just stay down here. Um, so, my original, you know what? We'll go ahead and erase all this because it's going to drive me nuts. So what we do is we take what I'm going to, for now, call the function orange, right? So, we know that here is our denotative, here's our connotative, pardon me, here's our perception, here's our judgment, sensation uh, goes there, thinking goes there, uh, intuition goes there, feeling goes there, great. And because we've opened it up into new dimensions, we know that one side's gonna be introverted, the other side's gonna be extroverted. So we'll say this side is introverted, we'll just add a little I there, and then this side is extroverted. And there we go. Great. And remember, this is following the, as I've demonstrated here, this is following my original dichotomies for it. So this is our function orange. Now what we're going to do is, because uh, my original idea was, OK, well, to make 16 types, all you got to do is divide it again. So we just have to conceptualize a fourth dimension. How hard could that be? <laughs> so um, I originally went with this intu intuition of the notion of time, where you have the past function orange and a future function orange. It's just an excuse to have two function oranges because, hey, now you have 16 slots. And the question is, what does that mean? How is that supposed to work? And my original idea was this, that what you do is you have this second orange. And by the way, I should preface, this way I'm going to show you doesn't actually solve the problem, but it's, I'm walking you through my reasoning because it'll I ultimately make it make more sense. But this isn't going to work, so don't get confused. But my original idea was rather than have a function orange, we will make a slot orange or a roll orange. And all I mean by that is we'll just assign to the orange uh, somewhat arbitrarily uh, but, I mean, it's all lined up in, in the proper way. The function slots, like dominant, auxiliary, tertiary, inferior, and then all of the subversions. Uh, this is how, that's how I laid it out in Motes and Beams. Very socionics-like. Um, so the way I've done it conventionally is I have dominant there, tertiary there, auxiliary there, and inferior there. Note, the reason I have them placed in this way is because, um, and then you have the subversions of each of these, right? So if your dominant function is ti, your subdominant right here will be te, because that's how it works out 
here and if your auxiliary is say s e then your sub auxiliary will be s i and you know if your dominant is t i then your tertiary would be a perceiving function which would be right here perceiving function of the same attitude so right right there so i had this notion of okay so now we have two oranges we have the function orange and we have the roll orange and we'll just take the function orange and we will put it inside of the roll orange and in order to generate the 16 types we'll just move the function orange around inside of the roll orange and we'll like a rubik's cube or something and we'll just lock whichever one of the functions we want to be the dominant one into the dominant slot and all of the others will follow and then i realized that okay that works great for eight of the types and it doesn't work for the other eight. It, it took me an embarrassing amount of time to realize this. Well, I say that as though it's like I've been sitting there. I, I've had several sessions, and, and I have one session, I come up with it, and then realize, wait, that doesn't quite make sense. And then I took a break, came back for another session. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, what was I? Yes. So this works great for eight of the types, right? If I want an ISTP, right? It works perfect. In fact, that is literally what this would represent. This orange is the ISTP. Dominant TI, tertiary NI, auxiliary SE, inferior FE. Great. What if I want an INTP? Okay, well, uh, maybe we can just, you know, if we swirl this around, turns out there is no way for you to get no matter how you turn this around, you're not going to get an INTP because the INTP looks like this, right? INTP is TI dominant, uh, SI tertiary, NE auxiliary, and FE inferior. So the TI and, and the FE, we can get those in place. But because everything is fixed on this function orange, Whenever TI is in the dominant position, NI is always going to be in the tertiary position, not SI. SI is always going to be up here. Why? Because they're both denotative by definition. You might be seeing where I'm going with this. They're denotative, so they're locked next to each other, so you can't generate the INTP, which has SI there. So what a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> where did I, where did I go wrong? Um, and that's when I realized that the solution to this little problem, at least is the, you know, if I want to go with the pretty geometric interpretation of things, the solution to this problem is provided by Jack Aaron. Um, because, as you might have already guessed, the problem comes down simply to the fact that here SI is locked in place. So I can get an ISTP from this, but I can't get an INTP. If I want an INTP, I simply have to switch the S and the N. Or another way of putting it is I would switch the T and the F. It doesn't matter as long as I only switch one side. So I have switched the way that they are combined. And that is the same as saying, let's just use a different dichotomy. Let's say that Sensation is not related to thinking. Let's make it related to feeling. All right? And then intuition will be related to thinking. And that dichotomy we already described briefly as detached and involved. So let's go back to earlier and see how this problem is resolved. Because once, once I have that new deck, well, here, I'll, I'll explain it in a moment, um, if it's not obvious already. So we have, excuse me, sensation, intuition, thinking, feeling, denotated, connotated, perceiving, judging. This is mine, um, but you can also split it up a different way depending on how you decide to um, assign these dichotomies and therefore assign whether T is more related to sensation or if it's more related to intuition. 
If you decide it's more related to intuition, then it ends up down here, and feeling ends up up here. And we'll go ahead and call this dichotomy involved, and this dichotomy detached, and these stay the same. But you see we've switched the position of those two. And then you just do everything else the same. You've just diverged at this original point. So I'll do the P and the J. So you get that one and you get that one. And if you're willing to do that, then you just go through the remainder of the system and everything builds up. It's just you had this original divergence. So when you get to the, to the, the function orange um, and the roll orange, you have the same roll orange. It's the same dominant uh, tertiary on the one side and all of that, but you now have a different function orange, a second function orange. And if you want the INTP, you have to choose the correct function orange. You have to choose the function orange that uses the involved detached dichotomy. Now, the reason this is interesting is because when you work it out, da -da -da, turns out that the eight types that use the um, denotative connotative dichotomy in the system to make uh, their types, all of those types fit into two temperaments. And the involved detached dichotomies produce eight types which fit into the other two temperaments. So we'll go, I'll go ahead and diagram this for you. Uh, boom, boom. So I want you to be able to see it. In fact, I'm looking over at my notes on the, on the other thing over there. Yes, because we have this here and this here. And actually, we only have the one. Sorry. So that would be just a big one. And then we have sensation, intuition, thinking, feeling. So this is the denotative, connotative one. And from there, we can get eight types which fit into um, just by revolving things around. One of those is the anarchic types. And those come about because we have, say, SI there and, sorry, SI there and, uh, what was it? Sorry, I'm trying to, yeah, sorry, FI, yes, because it's anarchic, what am I talking about? Um, SI, FI, and um, N, E, and T, didn't do that right. How embarrassing. N, E, there we go, okay. And then you fill in the other ones, but these are the, the four functions that end up in the main slot. So there's four types that you can get by switching these around of which one's in the main slot. The other one, the other uh, temperament is the theocratic temperament, right? The anarchic and the theocratic temperaments in motes and beams are totally opposite each other. And yet, in this system, they both come from the same function orange. That's such an odd term for me to use, function orange. But as you can see, uh, we'll go ahead and do, wait. Yeah, we'll, we'll just go ahead and do INFJ here. So NI, TI, uh, SE, wait, sorry. S E F yes F E yes like that uh, but they all they have not changed this fundamental connection right because N and F are always on the same line right these ones up here as you might have already guessed monarchic and democratic so I'll actually go ahead and Anarchic, Theo, and Monarch, and Democrat, um, which correspond to the, um, uh, shoot, how do you do a gamma? Uh, that's right. Gamma, Alpha, 
delta and um, sorry, I don't know why I'm not having a brain fart. Beta in the socionics. That's all I was trying to say. Uh, I'm not going to bother to to write out all of these because you can figure it out. But the point is, is you you use this altered one where sensation and feeling are more related, and we have a dichotomy to refer to that. And we might as well uh, plug it in. So uh, on the this side, you have say fi and ni. That'd be the ISFP. So that on this side, you would have se auxiliary and te uh, inferior. And then let's say we switch that around. So by the way, note that what we're changing here is between these two types, let's say the, mon the monarchic and the democratic, um, the subtypes of one are the main types of the other. That's the difference. That's where it's switching back and forth between them. Um, so da, 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 that is why over here we'll end up with, nope. We'll just do INTP because I'm having trouble thinking at the moment. Um, N, E, F, E, and S, S, I, T, I. Sorry, I flipped it around, but um, you get the idea. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And uh, the cool thing about that, this is this will be the final thing for this, is that um, remember that when I wrote floats and beams, I just took the denotative and the connotative for granted, and behold you generate the theocratic types from that. Jack, who came up with the involved detached, is, in Myers-Briggs at least, ENTP, um, but would fit into this quadra structurally, and uh, he's the one who came up with that. So I just thought that was pretty neat that that happened to, um, happened to combine and coalesce in that way. Um, there's probably uh, loopholes or problems in the, the system, but I was just excited to finally have uh, have it make sense for me. So, um, yeah, I think that's everything I had for this video. Um, yeah, so I'll see you all in the next one. Sorry it takes so long in between them, um, but uh, I have, well, I'm not going to make any promises. You know me, but uh, it is good to, to put this out there, so I hope this was useful for some of you, and I'll see you in the next video.